So I was looking through my backlog of videos that, of things that I kind of recorded myself doing earlier in the year. I want to say this was probably in May. February or May. Um, but I kind of just, I'm not sure what got me interested in doing it. And I only did it very briefly because it's something that takes, uh, that's like a lot of trial and error. It takes a lot of patience. And I think I spent like a whole day just messing around with it. But I wanted to see if I could get ChatGPT to generate shaders for me. Now, <laughs> it, it, I don't recommend, I've heard of people maybe try to do it before without a lot of luck. And um, like I said, it, it takes a lot of trial and error and you kind of have to, especially if you're trying to do it in Unity, um, you have to kind of know what to look for, like, because you can go out, you, when you do the code stuff in Unity, you basically go out to, uh, like, Visual Basic, whatever, to kind of edit the code itself, uh, and then, like, you save that, and then, like, you know, apply the effects in Unity, well, you kind of have to know what to look for to troubleshoot the coding, uh, for, to get shit to work, and, um, so it, it was definitely something I needed a lot of patience for. Now, um, right here I'm actually showing an example one of the shaders I managed to get it to generate. Um, I think I, I managed to get it to generate about three. And um, I'll show these first and then I'll kind of show what I had to go through with chat G GPT to get even get to this point. And um, I want to say that it just, it was a lot of stinkers, a lot of duds. Maybe like three out of like all the time that I spent trying to like have it generate like to to give me the coding to make these, I only managed to get it to generate three that actually have like some really interesting effects. Um, I will say before you try this, if you want to try this yourself, which I don't even know, I haven't messed around with uh, asking Jet GPT to to do stuff lately, so I don't know like if anything's changed or if it's gotten better. But, um, I would say with, with anything generated by chat GP, GPT, like especially shaders, use it your own risk. Because, um, I don't show it here, but the actual properties for these shaders, like, it, it, it only half works. Like, it included a bunch of, like, junk stuff, and I, I'm sure if you're something more, someone more proficient... At, um, you know, actually creating shaders, if you have the experience, like, you know, coding and stuff, those things, you would probably be able to, like, fix the code and just, like, get rid of the, the junk stuff or whatever just is included in there that does not need to be in there. I am not experienced. <laughs> this was just an exper experiment for me to see what I could get it to do by, by basically slamming it against the wall repeatedly until something came out. But, um... It is, it's cool. It, it generates some really weird fucking things. So I guess, it, like, I don't think I would use these for anything, like, legit. Uh, like, you know, a serious application. I would probably take these. And if I, if I get back to this again, to generate, uh, more weird shaders, I'd probably just, like, put them in the world. But, I, and see if they actually, you know, break anything or not. I, I think it, like, it, it would be, like, a weird artistic thing, probably. You know, where I have objects that have the, the shaders applied. Say, here, this is what I did. And chat GPT, here's an example of these weird things. You could look at them, and that's about it. Um, so I want to say here, in this video, I actually started, even though this shows like a really weird, like, monochromatic, multi-layered um, shader. It has like a weird visual effect going on with like... Um, it looks different depending on how far or close you're uh, looking at it. And there's like movement in it, it, like ripples and multiple like lines that like cross over with each other. It's very, it's bizarre. It, it almost says like a, um, I don't know, kind of like this magic eye things where it, it's like a visual illusion depending on like how you're looking at it. Uh, but that that's not actually the shader I started out with. I actually had chat GPT. Start out with a very basic... I was like, okay. Um, I can actually show it. Here, I can show what I actually asked it while I'm talking about this. But um, 
What I did first, and this is what I do when, when I've messed around with chat G GPT before, is to basically get to ask it the basics. I ask it, okay, what are shaders? Can you give an example of a, a basic shader? So um, I asked it that, and it'll, it'll give you like these synopsis of it. And um, so it gives you, this is using GLSL, OpenGL shading language. Uh, so that was the language that it tends to generate most of these in. And um, so it gave me, one that was it, so I put this <laughs> into Unity <laughs> via Visual Basic. Um, and yes, okay, so simple shader that simply renders a 3D object with a solid red color. So the cube in the middle, is the the basic shader I, the reason i did this is i was like okay well we need to find if if anything will actually work like from from the beginning like can it even generate a basic shader that'll work yes it did uh so i was like okay um and then i had it you know rewrite the shader example in a format that unity could read so while I was doing this, I was plugging this stuff in and like um, seeing if it would work or not. So basically, when it would give me something that had errors in it and that was broken, I would I would throw it back to Chat G G GPT and say, "Hey, there's an issue." I I end up doing this a lot with a lot of these shaders because they were broken as fuck and they had like features in them that did not make any fucking sense. Um. So that that's how this whole thing went. I would I would ha ask it to see if it could make a shader that had certain features to it. Um, it would give me this. Uh, so it gave me sh stuff in Shader Lab language. Um, and if it was buggy, I would throw it back and say, "Hey, there's an issue with this in this particular area." Usually, um. If in Visual Basic is what I was editing these in, Visual Basic will also tell you, um, in between Visual Basic and then Unity's own, like, errors console thing that tells you the errors, it gave me an idea what was wrong with the, the shaders that it tried to generate, and then I would take those, and I'd be, okay, here, uh, chat GPT, these have this issue with them, can you fix this? And so I kept going with that, it would happen... Uh, let's see. This is the one... This is what I started with, because this is what, um... Gave me the weird shaders. And, and I know, okay, asking it to make a sticky shader... Like, there there are uh, liquid shaders that exist, but it, it's very complicated to make those. That's not something you should really ask it to try and make, because that's a whole layer of stuff that I think, um... I think some of the, the shaders that are liquid that stick to things, I think they involve some kind of fuckery with cameras. So it, it's like a multi-layer thing that, that's involved with those. But I asked it to, <laughs> asked it to make one anyways. Um, so I'm showing this because the this weird... I'll show you guys some in a bit, but this weird like uh, shader I'm showing here that has like a lot of movement and seems like... Li like it seems like something that would work for, like, water. Because it, ha it has movement and, like, ripples. But I don't know what else is going on with this. Um, let me show... I have a second example here. Show this one. This shows it on a, a cube. We have it applied to a cube here. Uh, let's see, where's this one? So I applied the shader to a cube. Um, I guess it kind of has a, like an interesting effect. With, like it really is fascinating how it looks depending on how close it is or far away. And uh, when you move it around, it even has this. It kind of reminds me of like a CRT uh, TV screen in a way, with like the weird um, the lines how they like they make this effect. Where you're like, depending on what angle you're looking at it. So it's really fascinating. But this actually started because I tried to ask ChatGPT to make me fucking sticky shader. <laughs> a sticky liquid shader. Um, so this kind of, I'm going to just kind of skip through this, but it gives me the code. And then the thing is, is like, uh, it just like in the actual properties of the shader, when I put it in Unity, 
Um, and I, and when I finally got it to work, it would be, it would just add a bunch of like crap to the properties that didn't actually work. Like say it would add, actually add like uh, sliders and stuff. Cause usually shaders, a lot of shaders have like a ton of properties that you can adjust to, you know, they are all, they're, this really complicated shaders that do like a ton of shit. Uh, and they all have like different adjustments to them. Um, so it added some features like that to these shaders, but they did not work properly. So I couldn't really do too much with them. Um, I just wanted to see if it could even do it. So yeah, if, if you can see here, it says Unity says there's shader error. So that's what I did. I just kept throwing the errors back in it and back in it. It is basically, I kept going back and forth, back and forth with these until it would generate um oh my god it's just so much okay okay yeah it seems like let's see how many times that i have to do it here um looks like okay so it generated the shader one let's see two three and four. Okay, so it took like four tries of me throwing the errors back to it before I got this shader that I'm showing here. Um, it's actually telling me how, let's see, how would I test, I asked it, how would I test how the shader uh, sticks to objects? Yeah, that, there's no way I could get that. That it, it is definitely, I don't think chat, even chat GPT even knows how this is supposed to work properly because from what I remember, like, it probably doesn't exactly know what I mean by that, you know? Um, okay, yes. I noticed here. Okay, so basically, I was asking how how, how do we get this to work in Unity? And um, it told me that there's a, it added a stickiness property to the shader. It, this The shader does not work like a, a sticky liquid shader at all. It's just visually impressive. Um... And I told it the slider of the sticky shader seems to affect the speed of how the texture moves on an object. Okay, so instead of, you know, making it sticky, it, ca it can't make it sticky. There's no way. Uh, this stickiness slider that it added to the shader actually affects how fast it moves. So it's almost like um, I have a few shaders I've, I've messed around with before that have like a scrolling effect to them or some sort of movement. And so that slider, for some reason makes these effects here that you're looking at move like it changes the speed of them it's still very cool very cool looking shader even though it, it isn't what i was looking for um and then i had it rewrite so basically what i'm showing here is i may have copied the same code and then had it rewrite certain aspects of it um yeah just throwing it back and forth with these, and then I ended up with, um, let me show this next one here. You notice the, on the side of this one is the, I believe the same kind of shader I was showing before, but it's a different color, and, uh, it moves differently as well. Oh, I didn't have that one, uh, hold on a second, thought I had that one showing. There we go. So, yeah, this one on the side on the left is a rewritten version of the shader I was showing previously, but it's moving a lot slower and I had it like blue. Now, this one that I'm showing you here um, is very bizarre. It like renders... It's very strange depending on the lighting in the world. It's affected by the world's lighting and it shows the the skybox. I think depending on whether you have the directional light on or not, it it displays like stuff behind it very differently. Like it it will display only the sky uh, only the skybox, but it like only half of it though. It's very bizarre. Um I'm not sure at what point, let me see, that one probably, I think that one took like a very long time, holy shit, uh, to try and get this particular one. Um, I'm just going through here, like I was constantly, <laughs> it's just, oh, it was, it was bad. Um, anyways, 
Yeah, I think I was trying to, I, I guess I was trying to create another like liquid like shader or something with like a reflectiveness or something, but I was just running into a lot. I almost got it. Let's see. Last three years. So yeah, it was a lot of troubleshooting. Um, I think I have another example of this one here. So I think I, okay, this is another one that it generated um, that's similar to the first one or the second rewrite of them. I want to look at this this one again, though. Let me play it again because this one... Um, let me play it here. Yeah, this, this one I'm showing in the middle. Um, I probably should have shown what it looked like, but it, it's weird because it creates a... Uh, someone said it reminded them of a cat eye. It kind of has a cat eye effect, but like... Okay, yeah. Um, I noticed what I'm doing in the corner. I don't show it completely, but... Okay, so when I, when I turn off the directional light, you get this weird effect where it shows the skybox behind it, but the, the sort of like water texture uh, disappears, but it shows these weird outlines that still have the texture, so the white, this white stuff, these white lines that are in the the original texture, when I turn off the directional light and then move the cube around, it like, um, it shows the skybox, but then the white outlines show the texture. It's, it's very bizarre. Let me play that again. So, um... Yeah, that shows the effect there. So I don't know what... Okay, so with the directional light, it looks somewhat normal. It's it's like transparent and shows like um, this weird line. And it shows like a bit of the, the skybox. But when you turn off the directional light, it does, does that weird... Has that weird effect. So I wonder... I'm not quite sure what application this particular shader would have. Also, I'm loving, I love the other one, too, that weird, like, uh, the one that has, like, the movement. It's just really cool. And let me switch to this one here. This one's, like, I believe a rewrite, like, a third or fourth rewrite of, um, let's see, this one here. This one has very, very subtle movement. And I think you can you can sort of see it. Um, let me move it here. I don't show the properties completely, but I, I think with the sliders that this one had, um, it would change the movement of it. So this is like a different version of the shader that I got it to generate before. And uh, you can use the sliders to um, adjust like how close or far away the, the weird effect was and so and it would very the the movement though was a lot less noticeable than the first one first the second one that i i generated just very very bizarre um but yeah i can scroll down here you can see pretty much like how much i had to go through like, basically fight between chat, G GPT, and Unity, and, like, uh, errors in Visual Basic to even get to the point of of these, like, different shaders. I would say I generated, like, um, I don't know, like, three? I want to say I generated, like, three of them, but one or two of them are kind of, like, uh, different versions of the very first shader. So, um... The more the one that that is showing the skybox behind it is very unique, so I want to try and see if I can uh, if I get back to this, I want to try and see if I can create more of these. Like like I said before, I'm I don't think I would use these for anything like le any like legit application. I would just like probably put them since I mostly use VR Chat. Um, I would probably just. Put these in a world like a, a world that showcases them if i generate some more and just say hey these are like and maybe i, I don't know if i'd show like all that i had to do probably like a brief um thing that shows the the amount of trouble i went through and everything because i'm not somebody who uses who, who actually knows how to do like proper coding of, of shaders like I, I know how to use shaders but i don't like i haven't really learned how to make them completely yet i know 
very basic coding stuff and enough to where I could actually troubleshoot and know what to look for when I was in Visual Basic plugging these in to at least get these to work somewhat. Um, I don't know, it was pretty cool considering the trouble I had to go through, though, to make these. And uh, hopefully I can I could generate more, but it is it is a process to even get like chat GPT to get to this point. I don't want the thing is also is like um I didn't want to influence the creation of these too much. Like I want cuz if you did most of the heavy lifting then it would be just like like let's say I actually knew how to like write shaders myself. Um if I did most of the heavy lifting that it would just be me writing the shader and not like chat GPT. So I just want to see how like how capable of chat GPT was to even create shaders, but it is hell. <laughs> so you're better off. I mean, you're better off. In most of these cases, honestly, you're better off learning yourself uh, how to make shaders and everything. This, I, I think this is like kind of interesting as an assistive thing to maybe suggest to make like weird ones if you wanted to, but you're better off just like kind of making your own. There are plenty of tools, like, even if you don't fully know how to, like, write shaders yourself, there's... I've seen a lot of, like, um, stuff that exists out there, like, these whole software that people will made, even for VRC, that they have showcased in VRC, where it can help you, like, it has all these different adjustments and, and things that you can fool around with to kind of get the shaders that you're looking for. Shaders are just fascinating. They really are, and I, I fucking respect people who know how to write them because they're just like fucking magic. Like they they are responsible for I mean shaders are extremely important to anything that is in 3D, you know. It's an extremely important part of it. Um but I I love when people make um really cool like weird shaders though. But I guess that's the, that was the drive for this though because I want to see like, you know, what can chat GPT generate? I already got uh, another thing I haven't shown. I don't know if it worth. It's not worth making a whole video over. Um, but I actually got chat G GPT way back. So I wanted to see if chat GPT could write music. It is capable of it, but it has to be. It, it, it was very basic. Uh, there's a, it's another, everything. When it comes to chat GPT generating stuff, and you're trying to figure out if it can, if it can create stuff, you're better off uh, if it's something that can be created via like programming language. So uh, with music, there is a, a program that takes some type of language that can create, um, I forgot what it's called, but um, you can have ChatGPT generate the language that would like generate music, but... Um, I want to say it's like very basic notes. It's not capable of much. It's just, it, it really isn't. Um, I would say it'd, it'd be like trying to teach a cat or a pet trying to uh, learn music for the first time. You get the most basic notes or an insect. I don't know. Um, it, it's not very, it might have the information. It might be able to tell you stuff about music, but it, I don't think it's, it's not very capable of generating uh, music uh, itself, and I had to basically... It was like throwing throwing shit at a wall until I was able to get it to uh, create something. Like, even a very basic melody. Um, but, I don't know, maybe that'll improve in time. It's still fascinating, though. Like, even, like, for me, I know, I know AI stuff's very divisive, but uh, my opinion of it is, is like... Um, at least for me, as someone who, who dabbles in, like, art and 3D stuff and music and things like that, I'm a, I'm basically, I'm a, a jack of all trades but master on. I, I don't, like, <laughs> I'm not a professional in a lot of things that I dabble in, uh, but it's still, I love learning. I absolutely love learning and, and you know, it's I love the challenge of it, teaching myself. But uh, the way I see AI stuff is... Uh, I think it could be an interesting assistive tool. Like, as long as you're doing... I I prefer, like, I've dabbled with AI stuff before, but I like doing most of the heavy lifting um, when it comes to that. And I think that's that's fine. Like, if you're using it, if you're someone who's a creative person and, you, and it, it can do... 
it can add it be like sort of an assisting tool i have no problem with that or just doing like i just like doing like weird shit like this also that i mean there's no point to doing it it's basically just an experiment like saying like oh can it even like like how many things can i throw at this ai uh this chat uh thing to see if it like what it's even capable of and um I think it's it's good to know, though. You know, I was sort of remind. I guess it also what reminded me of this because uh, there was something that came up today that I saw. There's like a, I think it's called Luma AI. Uh, it's a thing that can generate three objects, <laughs> and uh, it, so people think it's going to be the new like asset flip thing. And there's some fears about it, but. Um, as someone who's actually used some assisted, uh, very mi in a mi minimal way, like, um, I use the Monster Mash AI to make, to do, f I don't have a phone that can do photogrammetry type stuff, so, uh, I've used, like, the best example I can think of is Monster Mash AI, which I can use to kind of make... Uh, photo scanned versions of like plushes and stuff, but I'm mostly doing the heavy lifting because it I just use it to like kind of uh, create parts out of the the photos, and then I have to go into Blender and completely clean the shit up and put it together, rig it, and all that. It I'm doing like I want to say 90% of that work um, when I use that thing. It, I just find it. And honestly, it's probably something I could just easily do in Blender. Um, but I, I don't know. I guess the, the Monster Mesh AI makes it a little bit quicker. But um, the issue with doing it that way is that the models end up being like extremely high poly. Like more high poly than you need. And um, that was the, the thing I was seeing with the Luma AI is that, um, you know, people are fearing like it could replace... The, the 3D work, but I was looking at those models and it kind of reminded me of the Bon Bon thing. It was like, these, these models are like, they have way more polys than they need to have. Like, you know, like that, that's, that's the thing I worry about as someone who's fooled around in Unity and made stuff and worlds and things like that. Um, that's going to be an optimization nightmare. Uh, if you, if you don't know how to do 3D modeling or optimization or, or anything like that, you can't just generate, like, these models and expect things to work like you want them to. You need to know how to do that. So it's like, it's like getting something to generate a burger. I guess, imagine if we had Star Trek technology. Sorry for my rant here. I'll stop it a bit. <laughs> Let me ramble. But it's, a, it's almost as if you had, um, you know... Uh, let's say we had Star Trek technology to generate, like, a burger or something, and, and you are known for... Use that to make your burgers, but you don't know how to make a burger. Let's say you're someone who's never made a burger before. You don't know what goes into making the burger. You just know that when you use the, the burger generator, it makes... It makes really good burgers, but, uh, to other people... Maybe it's too much? Like, like, let's say it just doesn't work out. There's something wrong with the burger when you're trying to serve it to someone else. And, but, but you don't know how to make the burger? Like, you don't know what goes into making the burger? So how the fuck are you supposed to fix that burger if you don't know how to make the burger? Like, that's probably the, the most terrible comparison. But I do think, um, kind of reminds me of, like, cooking in a way, because like uh, when you're doing like development or like make 3D models or anything like that, it's a learn. It's a thing you have to learn. The craft you have to learn, kind of like learning how to cook for the first time. You don't how to, you know you don't how to uh, know how to cook before. It seems really daunting. A lot of steps, a lot of complications sometimes depending on the recipe or what you're trying to make. But uh, like you know once you learn it, it gets a little bit easier, and you you know how to like you know do variants of that and make your own stuff, and then you kind of like get an understanding of it. Um, but it's like, if we can just generate food without understanding how to make it, I, I, I see problems in that. It is definitely not going to be like an instant, like, oh, people can, can generate like burgers now. Like we don't have a need for people to cook food or, or anything like, or know how to cook. I, I don't know. No, it's not, it's not that way. Anyways, thanks for listening to me rant and looking at my weird fucking shaders that I, I beat, I abused chat GPT to make. I may make more, um, 
when I have the free time because it, it's not easy. It's not easy to have it generate weird shaders at all. Um, so if I do this in the future, what I'll do is I'll take the ones I generated and I'll, I'll put them in like a VR world so people can like look at them. And I will, I will like pray that they don't break anything because like I said, it's risky uh, even trying to use like uh, AI generated shaders because you don't, if you don't, especially if you don't have like a a gun understanding of like the coding, you know, um, I would pr definitely test it out first in a while before I even try and put that out of the public. But um, thanks for listening. If you find this fascinating, give me a like. I like doing shit like this. Like, I, I don't know. I always like experimenting. Um, so I'll probably do more in the future.